Hi everybody, welcome back to Small Caliber Arms Review. I'm Richard and I've been working on putting together the correct Charlie Prince outfit. I've got the right coat, I've got the right shirt, I've even got the right scarf that he has hanging out underneath the uh, tails of his coat or the front of his coat. And I've got the right hat. Uh, that's the right hat anyways, pretty close to it. This is one I made. I did a video on the hat. I did a video on the Schofield. Uh, I did a video comparing the Barra Schofield um, air gun to a Cimarron American Model 3 and that was wrong but now I have the correct Cimarron um, Schofield this time. Um, the only thing I don't have is I do not have the correct pants which he's got some really funky ones there and I've got nothing to tote these guns in but what I do have direct from Will Gormley himself is the pattern for the Flames of Hell rig. And we're gonna get this thing put together so I can get a little closer to completing the whole outfit. Let's take a look at this thing. Okay, so here's the pattern. This is from Will Gormley himself. He is the guy that made the holsters for the movie, both the Hand of God and the Flames of Hell rig. And there's a story in here about uh, how he explains how he come up with the different uh, the differences in the two setups, the rigs and everything. And he did a fantastic job of it. Um, now, when you get your pattern from Will, I'm sure it's not gonna have this uh, spot of dye on it like mine does, but uh, luckily it did not hurt the pattern inside. It did get on the first page of the uh, right on old Charlie Prince's face right there but I don't need this one I just need these two sheets anyways and this is gonna fit uh, I think it's set up for 10 different guns and do like 30 of the most popular there's 10 different holster patterns in here that'll do 30 of the most popular guns in in America I guess um, and on the back of it he's got a list of the materials you're gonna need in the uh, the hardware, the finished materials, miscellaneous, and everything you're gonna to need to make this. And really, it's not a whole lot of stuff. And this pattern is set up for uh, intermediate uh, to beginner, I guess. Uh, it says right on the front here for the hobbyist or the professional patterns are intended for intermediate to advanced leather workers. This one is not extremely complicated because there's definitely not a lot of tooling on here, but there is a lot of sewing with the pattern here and everything. And it's just a really cool rig and I've been wanting to make this. Now some of the things you're gonna need, oh and look, he autographed it for me. That's the coolest part about this. Uh, you're gonna need a Cody clipped corner belt buckle. I got this one from Tandy because they have it in stock. Uh, I'm gonna be using my little Weaver three millimeter diamond punches on there because I'm gonna be using um, some Ritza Tiger thread. This is 0.8 millimeter. It's not a really big thread. So the punches I normally use are pretty big punches because I like to use like one millimeter, 1.2 millimeter thread. So I'm gonna use these. There's a little finer and I'm gonna be using a little finer thread on there. You're gonna need some quarter inch spots and you're gonna need some 12 millimeter domed capped rivets uh, in a couple parts. And you are gonna need a number 12 copper rivet and that's gonna put the shape onto the belt. And I have always called the shape the billet, but I bet calling it the wrong thing. The shape is the part that is gonna hold the buckle to the belt. That little short piece of leather is gonna fold over there, get riveted and sewn onto there. But as you can see in the pattern, most of your spots on here are purely decorative. Uh, actually, all the ones on the holster are decorative as, long, as well as the stitching on there. But you are gonna use on the bullet loops, on the ends of the bullet loop, there will be a 12 millimeter domed cap rivet on there to help hold those on. Of course, these bullet loops get stitched between each one of the cartridges. This pattern is set up for a 45 caliber round, but um, you can use, uh, you could alter it if you were shooting something with a, say a 38, 357, something like that. And on top of your leather, you're gonna need some pigskin suede, some nice bright pigskin suede. This is really thin. This is probably about uh, one and a half to two and a half ounce, maybe somewhere around there, really thin, and you're gonna want that. Now I'm gonna warn you right now, it is very hard to find uh, veg tanned suede pigskin. This is chrome tan. Now the biggest problem with chrome tanned leathers and firearms is chrome does not react well. It's chromium salts they use to cure the leather so it doesn't rot on you. Um, but the chromium salts that they use in this will interact with the metals if they're in contact too long. This is probably gonna end up, once I make this holster, it'll hang up on the wall behind me there. 
I will use it for a little bit of filming out on the range, but it's not going to hurt it for a short period of time. Clean it up, wipe it down with oil and everything. If you're going to, you know, store your guns, you should store them separate than the holster anyways. And then just some regular nine to 10 ounce veg tan is what we're going to be using for the body of this thing. But I think I've got everything I need. Um, all I need is the uh, will to go get the stuff and get it put together. All right, now one of the very first things I like to do when I'm doing one of Will's patterns is I will take the sheets down to Staples and I will have them make a copy of the sheets that I need because I don't wanna hack them all up. I mean, you can do it, it's fine. It's not gonna hurt anything. Uh, I'm only gonna make one out of this pattern. I'm not making multiples of these and selling them. I don't sell any holsters. A lot of you guys have contacted me and asked me if I'd make you one. I just, I don't do that. But, um, so I like to make a copy of them and then, then I can cut these up. Now I really want to have it laminated so it makes it a little stiffer and easier to trace around on the leather. I like to use a ballpoint pen, a very fine ballpoint pen when I'm doing it but um, their laminator was screwed up so they just made me some copies and the only ones I need is this sheet and this sheet because this has the pattern for the Smith & Wesson Schofield 7 inch barrel and that's the one that was used in the movie so that's the one I'm going to use there is one on here for 1858 with an 8 inch barrel and I have that Model 3, which would probably fit in there, but I've got two of the Schofields. Even though one's an air gun, I'm going to make the correct one anyways. And he's got the belt pattern on here too with the bullet loop pattern and the whole nine yards. So what I'm going to do is the belt is two and a half inches wide. I'm going to get my piece of leather up here. I'm going to cut my two and a half inch piece out of the edge right here that I've already got established as being straight. And then some of this curved spot back here. Since it is the right weight for the holster, I'm gonna cut my holsters out of that. I gotta cut two of them out, a right and a left, and you do wanna watch that because it only comes with one pattern. You're gonna flip one one way and one the other. You're gonna have the rough sides in on both of them, and then you're gonna line it with that pigskin suede. One of the things you definitely wanna watch out with these is they're wood, and they've got this blade, like I said, embedded in the end here. It comes with these little pieces of hose, little tiny pieces of hose. That blade is sharp from one end to the other, and they put these over the ends of it there so you don't cut yourself. You really have to watch as you open this up to accommodate wider leather, your blade is going to retract in there a little bit, and sometimes these hoses can fall off of there, and you can cut yourself really bad with one of these. You really want to be careful with it. All right, two and a half inches wide. Okay, there's my two and a half inch wide belt and I'm going to get my pattern cut out so I can get some pieces cut out of the other side of this. Okay, so I've got all my parts and pieces cut out. I've got the holster, I've got the hammer thong and the hammer tie down lock, which is another little piece there. You can do a blood knot on that. Uh, the toe plug, yes, this one's got a toe plug, two toe plugs, one for each of the holsters. Uh, I love the looks of toe plugs. I just hate doing them, but maybe with a little more practice, I'll get better at it. Uh, you got the, uh, the holster, the belt loop that goes on the back of the holster. Uh, you have a template here. This is where your cartridge loops are going to lay out on the belt. And then you've got this little strip here, which is also a template, which is going to be where your uh, bullet loop lace is going to get marked and everything. It's the correct length, correct spacing so that when you make the loops and you got to make it out of four to five ounce leather. And I did pick me up a new toy. Um, this is a leather splitter, a Skyver. So hopefully I can get the correct thickness now. Um, it's got a little bit of weight to it and I'll clamp it down to the table, cut my strip out and pull it through there. Um, I've got my belt laid out on the table and I've got my belt pattern laid out on there. Now, don't throw away all your little scraps when you go cutting them off there because there's important instructions on some of these. And one of them for the belt measurement, it says the waist measurement in inches should equal a measurement in inches between points A and B. As a general rule, belt length is pant size plus four inches. As a general rule, for me, I find that doesn't quite work right because my belt, I wear 32s, 34s on the waist, and that would just be too narrow. I've measured all my belts up here on the wall, and from the end of the 
buckle, not the center of the buckle, but the end of it is where the center, your center hole is going to be. When you lace that through there, put the pin through the buckle and you know, it snugs down your center hole is not in the center of the buckle. It's a little bit farther ahead where your billet goes through there. So all the measurements I took on these belts here, it all equals about 41 inches. Uh, plus I'm wearing the belt over top of pants and stuff. So maybe uh, I'm not measuring it right or something like that, but for me, 41 inches is going to work. So I'm going to get all my marks put on here and it's pretty easy. It just narrows down the one end here to inch and a half to go through the buckle, the five holes in it there for the adjustments on the belt. And then you've got three marks down on the other end of it where your shape is going to go on there. And this is going to fold over and that's the piece that's going to hold your buckle and the marks where they go are all on there. So I'm going to get those all marked out and then get to cutting on the belt part of it. Very simple belt and I really like them that way. So now I'm just going to use my awl to poke all these little plus marks on here. That's the center hole, center of each of the stitch holes. So I'm going to go with that and I'm going to start from the middle and work my way out. All right, all those holes are marked. I'm going to get the belt cut out. I'm going to get the the shape cut out of the piece that I've got left over from this. And I may skive it just a little bit because it is pretty thick. I'm definitely going to skive the middle where it folds over right between these four rivets where the uh, pin of the buckle goes through there. Whenever you're cutting into a corner like this, always try to cut out of the corner and not in towards it because if you overshoot that a little bit, it's going to look bad. All right, one of the things you do not want to do when you are punching holes is you do not want to punch a hole that is too big for your rivet. I found that if the hole is too big, these posts can get off just a little bit and it can cause your, your caps won't be lined up over top of each other. They'll be skewed a little bit like that and it does not make for a good hole in there or a good rivet. Now this is one of those tools that I'm not a real big fan of, but it works and it can be very dangerous. It has a very sharp blade underneath here that is kind of forced into a little bit of a curve. And what you do is I need to thin this out a little bit here because this is going to fold over. And if there's too much thickness there, it gets to be a lot of bulk and hard to do. All right, wet the whole thing down. Yeah, that bends a whole lot nicer right there. And let's get that Cody clip corner belt buckle out of its little pouch and put it on here because before I set any of these rivets, I want to make sure that it is going to fit. Yeah, that's going to work. All right, so I'm still not going to bother setting any of those because there's still got to be some dye put on these things. Pick up all my parts and pieces and get this mess all cleaned up. Okay, so I've got all my parts and pieces cut out for the belt. There's the shape, there's the belt, and there is the bullet loop thing. And I did go ahead and run this through my uh, little skiver there, which um, I did not film that part of it because I wanted to make sure I got it right before I did. And since I got it right on the first try, I just not going to do it again. So anyways, these holes are spaced differently than my punches. So I'm going to have to end up using the single punch to punch out all 110, 75, whatever there is. There's a whole bunch of holes in this thing. And then I'm going to use my smaller one. I already established my stitch groove on the shape. Now this belt does get a groove all the way around it, but he does not stitch it up. So 
I'm okay with that. That's a lot less stitching I got to do. The belt is really pretty simple, but I'm going to get all my holes punched. And like I said, I'm going to use the smaller punch, the three millimeter weaver punch I got for this because I want the stitching to be a lot smaller. Unfortunately, with the bullet loops, they're going to be a lot bigger than any of the punches I've got. So I'm going to go ahead and get all these holes punched in this thing. Then I'm going to go ahead and dye all these parts for the belt, and then I'm going to sew them together, and then I'm going to move on to the holster. I don't necessarily do everything in the same order, the belt or the holsters, belt first, holsters first, whatever. But um, as long as they get done and I do the procedures to put the individual pieces together, it'll work out just fine. So anyways, I'm going to get to punching some holes. Now, one of the reasons I want to go ahead and punch the holes first in this before I dye it is because I want the dye to be able to get down in those holes the best it can. Uh, that way you just don't have little pieces that don't show up. Plus, I want to dye it before I put my uh, thread in there because with the red thread, I don't want the dye to uh, change the color of the thread. I want it to still be nice and bright. Of course, Charlie Prince's holster was not pristine in the movie. It was uh, dirty and worn, and that's the way it's supposed to look. It wasn't like he was a brand new bad guy out there on the range, so uh, it was aged. But I want this one to age naturally. Now, on something like this, you don't necessarily have to follow the plan uh, exactly. Uh, these stitches, most of these are going to be hidden by the bullet loops themselves. And I could have actually punched more holes in there. And as long as my spacing was correct between the bullets, it would have been just fine. And I could have used like uh, my four hole punch and went ahead and done this pretty much in one, maybe two swats per bullet loop instead of the four that I've got to do. But um, I want to stick to the plan as closely as possible. This dye is pretty smelly. It's the uh, Thievings Pro Dye Black. It is an oil-based dye with an alcohol carrier. And I do have a couple paper towels ready just in case I screw up something. But I'm going to get a little dye soaked into this thing. It does not take a lot. But I'm going to get it dyed up. Oh yeah. Get it worked in there, nice even coat on it. Yeah, that looks nice. And make sure it's worked down in the edges there. Now one of the nice things about this particular piece of leather is the back is not real fuzzy, which is something you want to keep an eye on if you're going to be doing something that's uh, the back of it's going to be shown or be able to be seen. You want to make sure it's not real fuzzy. I have a couple holsters, some of the very first ones I made that uh, are very fuzzy and look very bad. We'll let all these pieces dry, then we'll come back and stitch this thing together. All right, I've got all my patterns cut out, all my pieces cut out. I've got the holsters cut out. I've got the uh, belt loops cut out. I've got the toe plugs, the hammer pieces, all that good stuff. And you can see it's a little bit shinier now. I did laminate this and I did it the cheap way. I did it with just packing tape. But the reason I did that is because when I do these, I need to wet these down. I don't want the paper getting wet. And I got to go over it with a uh, uh, stylus to trace this out so I know where that design goes in the holster. Now, there's rivets. All these little double marks right here are for spots. And spots are these little pieces right here. And they've got little spikes on them. And most of the ones, the quarter inch ones, are the ones that go where these dots are, have two prongs on them. And mine have four prongs on them. And they're very short prongs. So I wanted to do a little test piece before I go destroying that. So this is a scrap from the uh, leather I cut out for the holsters. And this one right here is a spot. And those prongs are supposed to go all the way through the leather and then bend over on the back side. Well, they're so short and this is such thick leather that 
they don't do it. I do have some two prong ones that will go through there. The problem is, is they're not the right color and these are silver. So these two spots right here are domed rivet uh, mushroom cap rivets. So they've got the flat back on them, which is great. And they're long enough to go through this leather. And I've got the right tool to set them. A domed cap setter. It's got a really deep dish in there. And that's what's needed to set these in there. So I'm going to get all this stuff traced out on here. And instead of marking each one of these two parts for where the spot goes, I'm going to actually just mark a center in there. And then I will put my, uh, I'll punch my holes for my rivets and put those in there and get this all done up. All right, if I were to guess, I would say there are about, I don't know, 250, 300 holes in there. If you want to freeze that and count them all, go for it. I don't want to. Um, but I've got all my holes punched in the first holster. And this will actually be the right-hand holster, even though it's made left-handed because... In the movie 310 to Yuma, uh, Charlie Prince wore his holsters backwards, butts forward. And remember what, uh, what's his name said? Uh, Those upside down pistols yours really worry me. Fellas that carry them like that are bad medicine. Anyways, um, I've got another one to do. I've got all my lines laid out and everything. So I've still, I am about halfway there in the hole punching. Uh, still a lot to do. Once I get that done, then I can dye the front and the edges of this. I'm, I'll dye the, I'll bevel it, then dye the front and the edges. Um, I did mark a little circle around here. This is where the hammer thong goes through there, and I'm going to lace that in there before I put the, um, the suede on the back of it. I got to do all my stitching here, put all my spots in there and everything, but the hammer thong needs to go in before I put the suede on the back. Also because it needs to be able to slide back and forth and it's a little difficult it would be a little difficult to get in there i do have a lacing thong i can use to get it through there but we're just gonna uh leave that unglued and then um, move on from there i got a lot of holes to punch in this thing and yes i am punching one hole at a time and the reason for that is I've got one that'll do, I think that's a six prong right there, but there's not a single flat spot in any curve on here. There's not a single flat spot on any curve anywhere. The only straight line I've got down here is at the bottom, and that's the only place I can use this one. If you use one of these and think, well, that one's not too curved, I can go ahead and get away with using that right there. It will stick out like a sore thumb when you're done, I guarantee you. If you use one, it takes a lot longer, but the results are a whole lot better. So I don't mind spending a little bit of time on it to make it look good. And, and I don't want to sacrifice quality for speed. All right, that time I did get a little bit of dye on my hands. It'll be all right. Just a little bit right there and a little bit there and probably everywhere else. Anyways, I'm going to get this out drying. And while this is drying, I got a belt I got to do some stitching on. Okay, the first thing I'm going to start with is the bullet loops on here. And I'm not going to wet this. This is pretty thin right now. Um, so I'm just going to go with it like it is. I am kind of pre-folding them just a hair right at the holes where they get stitched to the belt that just helps it i guess retain that shape or put it into that shape a little bit easier now there's 20 bullet loops on here i peeled out probably about i don't know six feet of thread maybe a little bit more than that maybe about eight and hopefully that'll get me what i need
So the bullet loops are on there. And we'll grab a couple rounds here and shove them in. Nice snug fit on them. Oh, what the heck, we'll go ahead and put all 20 of them in there. All right, all 20 of them are in there. And the nice thing about this is it does not have the belt all warped up. It is still flat like it's supposed to be. Now I need to put my two domed rivets in the end there and then that part of it will be done. I gotta sew the shape on the end of it here and then the whole belt will be done. And by that time the holster should be dry and I should be able to start stitching on all that stuff too. Yay! All right, I just got to thinking because I've made this mistake before on the Pale Rider holster. Uh, I've got two holsters that go on this belt. One goes on the left, one goes on the right. They're going to be swapped, so they're kind of cross draw butts forward. And if I put this on here, I just started scuffing that up a little bit because I want to put a little bit of contact cement in between there. Um, if I do that and put the buckle on there, I may have a really hard time getting the holster on there. So I'm not going to put this one on just yet because I need to make sure that I can get that holster on there. So I think what I will do though is I will get this bent over and get the, um, get the buckle put on this part and I may put a Chicago screw in there just so I can try it on and make sure it fits right. Okay, so the holsters feel pretty dry. Um, this is the left one, even though you would think that that would be the right. Like I said, he wears them butt forward. So we're going to get some thread and I'm going to start stitching in here first. And once I've got that on, then I can go ahead and put the, uh, the uh, belt loop on there. And then I can put my little metal studs on there and everything and then I just want to plan this out because I don't want to screw this up. Um, I do need to mark me an area on there with a pencil so that I can remember I did it on the other one but I need to remember not to put any glue in there and I will need to lace the um, hammer thong in there before I put that on because it's a whole lot easier to get this thing in there right now than it will be to do afterwards. Plus, I'm gonna to have to adjust this. Once I get the holster formed up and everything, I'm gonna to have to pull this where it needs to be. And then I gotta do the little uh, keeper here. And it's a blood knot that goes on the end. Blood knots are really cool looking, but they can be a pain to get together because it is hard to pull that leather through them little slits here and get it formed right and pull it tight. But I'm gonna take this out for now because it'll probably be the last thing I do before I put the liner on there. Alright, I was debating whether or not to put the toe plug in this thing. I did kind of a dry fit on it. It fits in there great. The problem with the toe plug is they're, they're a lot of work to get it just perfect. And if you don't, it really shows. Of course, you're only going to see it from the bottom anyways. But um, I dry fit it in there. It fits really well. I got some contact cement on it right now. So I'm going to attempt to get this in there without uh, screwing it up. I'm going to try anyways. And I think I got it. I think, anyways. 
there really is no adjusting once you've got this in there because uh, contact cement sticks on contact so I think it's in there pretty good I do have my hammer stuck in there my mallet just in case I need to push up on it but um, I think I've got it where it needs to be and hopefully I can stitch this in there now now the biggest problem is is I've got all these stitches around the outside there of course the shortest distance between two points is a straight line so if you measure the distance all the way around there and you measure the distance of my stitch groove in there there's quite a bit of difference so my spacing on the outside here is going to be much smaller because I have to have the same number of stitches on the inside as I do the outside. So it's tricky to do and get right and I'm going to try my best to get it right and see what happens. Now one of the things I do like to do and I've done this on a couple, the very few that I've done toe plugs in is I try to make a mark on the inside of that stitch groove corresponding with the stitch on the outside there and you really cannot pre-punch these holes but I can give myself an idea of where that needs to come through at and like I said the stitching is it's the same number of stitches but in a much smaller area so I'm not poking my all all the way through there, but I'm giving myself a target to go for because I'm going to run my stitches in from the outside to the inside. I'm just trying to make a mark that corresponds with each one of the stitches there. All right, now that I've got the left holster done or the right holster for the left side, uh, I can go ahead and I've already glued this and set my rivet and I'm going to go ahead and do the stitching on here and I just want to punch these holes. I've already got them all lined up and everything. just want to open them up a little bit with the awl and this awl that I've got is actually one of my sewing needles that I broke the end off of and went ahead and fit it into my stitching awl. And it really helps get these holes lined up and opened up a little bit. It's still a little tough once you get a layer of thread in there to get the needle through it too. One of the things I like about using stitching punches instead of punching holes for the, uh, the thread is if you punch a hole in there, that material is gone. And when that material is gone, if your thread doesn't fill up the hole, then you're going to have a little gap there around the thread. So the thing with the stitching punch is it doesn't remove any material. It just pushes that material to the side. And then eventually it will relax and close back up around the thread and give you a nice tight fit around it, I guess. I did get the toe plug sewn in there and really I wish I would have used, I do have bigger thread, uh, got 1.2 millimeter thread. I used the .08 on this and I used the smaller punches and what that did was it made me have to put a bunch more stitches in that toe plug than I really wanted to so they're so close together that it kind of tore some of the leather just a little bit. And that's, I mean, it's not going to come out. It's glued and there's enough stitches in there to hold it too. But it just doesn't, I like the looks of toe plugs. I just hate putting them in. Maybe one of these days I'll figure out how to do it without a bunch of issues. All right, now that I got the first one done, it's all sewn up and put on the belt and sewn so it, it cannot come off the belt now. Um, and retention on this thing, once you pull the hammer thong off, is very minimal, which I really like for this one because Charlie Prince was kind of a fast draw kind of guy, um, even though he wore them backwards, which I don't like. But I got to make it like the movie one. Anyways, I got to get finishing up this second one here. I got to put all my little uh, rivets in there and stuff, and then I got to get my suede glued on the back. So I'm going to get busy with this thing.
All right, if you want good looking, consistent stitches when you're doing this kind of stuff, you have to be consistent. So if you start with the needle in one place, every stitch after that has to be exactly the same. So you pull this first one through, we'll get it evened up. I like to start on the front side of it. So I'm gonna push that first needle through there Keep it from getting knotted up if I can. And when I put my second needle through, where I put my first string is going to be key to it. So I'm going to pull it up and back a little bit and then put my second needle through there. Snug that down a little bit and I'm going to put my first needle again back through that hole. And I'm going to pull it up and back. I'm going to do the same thing every single time because if I change it on the next stitch, if I pull it down instead of up, it's going to make the thread look a little bit different. Again, I got to find the hole there. There we go. Again, first needle. up and back. Sometimes it's hard to see the hole in the suede because they don't tend to stay open like they do on the veg tan. But I want to do every stitch exactly the same all the way down my seam. Otherwise it'll change the look of it. That's the key to getting a good looking stitch, consistency. So not only does it matter what I do on the front side of it by putting the needle through the same way each time and pulling up and back, it matters on the back side too. Now what I always do is I put the back needle underneath the front needle. So I'm going to pull this through. All right, I'm going to pull this through and I'm going to pull it up and back and you can see my back needle is underneath my front needle. If I were to change this around and put it over the top, that would affect the way my stitch looks on the front side. It may be very subtle, it may not ever even be noticed, but it will make a difference on it. So I always front first, up and back, back needle underneath the front needle. Find the hole, push it through, and snug it up with about the same amount of tension each time too, because every little thing you do, if you do anything different, it will affect the stitch. So up and back, underneath, pull it through. Consistent, 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 and that'll give you a consistent stitch. That's why machine stitching looks so good is because the machine does the exact same thing every single time. It can't help it. Okay, I've got the blood knot finished up on there and the hammer thong is done. I probably should have tightened it just a little bit more, but uh, that'll be all right. It is definitely going to be easy to draw 
uh, pretty much zero retention on there. And this is the right side, even though it's made left-handed because it's butts forward on this thing. So um, we'll get it put on the belt and uh, see how the whole thing looks together. All right, guys, there it is. This is the holster from the movie 310 to Yuma, the holster that Charlie Prince wore, probably one of my favorite bad guys in a Western. Well, both of them, Charlie Prince and Ben Wade were both bad guys, and it's probably the only Western movie with bad guys that you like more than you do the good guys. The movie was done back in, I think, 2011, somewhere around there, and I got this pattern from Will. Will uh, made the movie holsters, and he makes the pattern and sells the pattern, so if you want to make one of these, you can contact Will. I will put a link in the description down below where you can go there and order the pattern from him. It is a really good pattern, a really good-looking holster. I've got both of them made, left and right, butts forward. I've got the 20 bullet loops on the back of it there. And it's not a bad holster to make, not a hard one to make. I did change things up a little bit. Instead of using spots for the design around the, the sides right there, I actually used um, domed cap rivets. Um, another thing that Will did was he treated his with olive oil, and I have used olive oil on holsters before, and it works great. You don't have to worry about getting it going bad or going rancid or whatever. As long as you treat it right, don't soak it. You don't want it dripping wet and keep it dry and everything like you should do a holster anyways. They're leather, they, they absorb moisture, they evaporate moisture, and if you don't keep them conditioned, they will uh, give you problems. I treated mine with leather balm with Atom Wax, and I got that from Weaver Leather Supply. A lot of the stuff I got from Weaver, Weaver Leather Supply or Tandy. Tandy carries the correct Cody clip corner belt buckle that I've got on there. And it's, it's just a really cool holster from one of my favorite Westerns. And um, one of the nice things about it is you got armrests there you take with you everywhere you go. Not a bad holster at all. Uh, the hat, the jacket, the shirt, the scarf. My daughter made the scarf for me. And uh, the only thing I need now is those orange pants that he wore in the movie. And I'll pretty much have the whole get up. Uh, the bad part is, is I can't find anything similar to those anywhere. So other than maybe a pair of hunting pants that I've seen on eBay that could be modified to made, made to look like the pants there. But uh, it's, it's just a pretty cool get up. That's the only thing I got left to get to finish it pretty much. Uh, maybe lose uh, 30 or 40 pounds. But it's just fun to do this kind of thing. I enjoy making the holsters. I enjoy doing the whole costume thing when I do it too. Even when I'm doing the gun reviews. And I will do a gun review on this one, the Schofield 45, because I haven't done that yet. I did do the Barra BB gun. Um, and I, I just need to get out there and do that. But uh, if I don't find those orange pants soon, this town's gonna burn! Except for the saloon. I can't burn the saloon. It's. Uh, the only building out here too so thanks for watching small caliber arms review